Dealing with unreconciled items in a physical inventory of fixed assets is a major problem and maybe the primary reason why controllers and auditors are very reluctant to take that inventory. In their heart, they know that if they take the inventory, they're going to find items on the books that they can't find physically, which we would call a ghost asset. What they may not realize is that at the same time, you're going to find assets physically there that you can't relate to a specific item on the fixed asset register. The reconciliation of what's there and not on the books and what's on the books and you can't find is a significant problem in two ways. One, trying to reconcile it and match up the unmatched items, so to speak, is time consuming. Even worse, when you're at the end of the process and you simply have a list of items that aren't there and you can't find and you know that they're not there and you know that there's nothing else to offset it, you're going to have to take a charge to P&L to write off the non-existent assets. Worse, this can call into uh, question the integrity of your internal control system so that if you write off a substantial part of your fixed assets, auditors in terms of the Sarbanes-Oxley internal control requirements may raise a question, what are you doing? What haven't you been doing? The answer really has to be twofold. One, at some point you have to get even and start with a good record that you know is there and two, periodically from then on take the inventories and do the reconciliation. Now setting up that record initially is a significant, takes a significant amount of effort. No matter how good the software is, you simply have to transfer the bad records you've got in the past to try and make them fit the new system which will be very complete and comprehensive. Many companies, and this is just human nature, many companies wait until there's a new corporate controller or CFO and the new incumbent figures this is the best time in the world to try and get the system correct and any charges will be attributed to the former management. I'm not recommending this, but human nature suggests that this happens frequently. Another time when it's very easy to get a fixed asset system up and running is if there is a merger and the acquired company has typically not good fixed asset system. The buyer, the acquirer, should spend a little bit of effort to get the fixed asset system of the acquired company up and running on a good modern software system. And there is no penalty in terms of charge to expense in an M&A transaction because the way the accounting works, if you can't find some assets, you simply don't put them on the books de novo from the date of the acquisition and you simply will end up with a higher goodwill which doesn't get written off to expense. So it's almost a freebie to get a new fixed asset system started accurately when there's an acquisition. In the absence of an acquisition, you're going to find when you start from scratch that there are some assets that aren't there that have to be written off. You're going to find the assets that are there that you can't find and technically you're not supposed to offset one with the other but again logic suggests that if you have a chance of assuming that the fixed asset system from 5, 10, 15 years ago was not too well maintained you can say well this was just an error that was there for 15 years and we're correcting the error and the net of the pluses and minuses isn't all that material 
And so we're going to set up the new system with not a major charge to expense. But you are going to find 10 to 15 percent of the assets on the books are not there and you're going to find a significant number of assets that are there that you can't identify. And the trick is to be creative enough to avoid having a major charge. There will be some charges and when you have a new CFO or corporate controller, uh, that is often the time when these uh, adjustments are made.